In this video, we're going to have a look at the Excel program window. Do please be aware that this is created using Microsoft Office Excel 2010, and the ones we have in class at the moment are 2007. The only real difference, however, is that the Office button has been replaced with a file menu. That is the only real difference. We'll have a look at the program window to begin with. We've got the name bar at the top, and then we have the minimize, restore down, or maximize, and close buttons to the top right. Below this we have the tabs and the ribbon. So we've got home, insert, page layout, formulas, and so on. And they're the tabs, and then we have the ribbon below that. It is very similar to Word in that we have the ribbons and the tabs and within each ribbon different areas are grouped together with like options being found in those groups. With Excel we have the name box just underneath the ribbon on the left hand side and that tells us which cell is currently selected. We also have the formula bar which tells us the information that is inserted into a cell. The program will open by default with a blank workbook that contains three worksheets. And this area here, the main part of the screen, is a worksheet. We can see at the bottom we've got three tabs, Sheet 1, Sheet 2, and Sheet 3. And this tells us which sheet we're looking at. And as I say, the uh, program opens with a blank workbook containing three worksheets. Each of these little rectangles on the worksheet is a cell, and the cells are where we inf enter information. They're split up into columns, running A, B, C, D, E, and so on, all the way through the alphabet and beyond, and then rows, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and so on, again running down through the numbers. The cell reference, the cell that we're currently in, will always be displayed in the name box. And here we can see it's A1, so that means we're in column A and we're in row 1. And the selected cell will always have a thick black border around the edge. We can select different cells by positioning the mouse cursor over the top of a cell. And when the mouse cursor is a thick white plus symbol with a drop shadow to the bottom right hand side that means we can select a new cell so if I click inside D6 that's column D row 6 we can see that the name box now displays the cell we're in to insert information into a cell all we have to do is start typing a label is a piece of text and a number is a value. Do please be aware that labels are always left aligned by default and values are always right aligned. As I say as soon as we have a cell selected we can type in information. If we need to make changes to that information, if I want to capitalize the word 9, all I have to do is click into that cell again and anything that I type on the keyboard will overwrite the original piece of information. If we're looking to edit a piece of text we either have to get the cursor flashing in the cell by double clicking and that gives us the cursor or by a single click to select the cell and then in the formula bar we can left click when we've got the I beam and delete the information and type it in as we want. So that's inserting information into a cell. To move around the cells we can either use the mouse cursor and the plus symbol or we can use the directional arrows, the up, down, left and right arrows on the keyboard. Up and down move us up and down a single cell, left and right move us left and right along a row. Let me go back into D6. 
with the cells, they are not a set um, width and height. If we had a piece of information, if I go into cell A1 again and type in some information, do be aware that some labels will overrun or spill into the next cell, or at least it appears to. If I select cell B1 now, and the easiest way to do that is with the right cursor key, if I start typing, as soon as I've left that cell and exiting a cell, either through pressing a cursor key to select a new cell or with the mouse cursor, it confirms the entry into that cell and can you see that the text inside cell A1 seems to have disappeared in part. The information is still there as we can see in the formula bar but because of the column width the information is hidden from view. To widen a column all we have to do is position the mouse cursor in between the A and the B so on the left hand side we'll have the column we need to widen and on the left on the right hand side we'll have the column next to it as soon as I'm on that dividing line between those column headings I've got a double ended arrow if I double click it extends the column width as wide as needed for a piece of information so we're never constrained by width of a column we can always make it wider if we need to. You can also drag a column as wide as necessary by just getting that double ended arrow, pressing and holding the left mouse button and dragging it across in either direction. This is true also of the row height so a double click would make the column or the row as high as necessary. We can also drag it up or down as needed. That's the program window and as we look at specific functions they will be investigated in further video videos.